All right, guys, <clears throat> I wanted to do a really, really fast video for you about the uh, the Springfield Prodigy. Um, so I ordered this uh, just about the moment that it was announced, uh, maybe a day or two after, um, from Sportsman Ware Sportsman's Warehouse. I got the 4.25 inch barrel version. Um, was really excited. Kind of debated back and forth whether the five or four and a quarter was the way to go and i just decided on the four and four and a quarter so as i waited for this to to ship um i started to see some gun reviews and some other things coming out i mean other than the initial uh you know youtube videos that kind of sang the prodigy's praises and um i started to see some videos come out in the next the following few days that uh that really didn't that, that gave me concern um so when mine came in, uh, you know, some of the videos said that the, the five inch model was having a little bit more of the problems than the four and a quarter, but uh, so I was very optimistic to receive mine. So I got mine in uh, a couple days ago. Um, I did a full tear down of it and I took it to the range today and I kind of wanted to give you a breakdown. So if you haven't seen this already, this is the, you know, the Springfield Prodigy box that it comes in. It's got a kind of a nice like soft touch or like a nylon laminate over it. <clears throat> so it feels, it feels really nice, um, but it is still just a cardboard box. You open it up, <clears throat> you know, we've got the the writing in here, the Defend Your Legacy writing, which I think came out like around the time the marketing for the, the Springfield Saint came out. And inside you've got kind of a nice, you know, a zipper, uh, padded soft zipper uh, bag for the gun itself with the Springfield logo on it right there with the crossed cannons or whatever that is. And, um, yeah, so pretty nice in the way of a of a gun bag. In here you've got maybe your instruction manual and some other some other small things. And then inside the accessories part, I've already taken it up, but you would have your spare 20 round magazine or or 17 round whatever is not in the gun at the time. A couple Allen keys and a the optic plate that will be for the hex dragonfly. So um, this is a little bit of a different topic. Uh, that I'll talk about here in a minute, but uh, I purchased the Hex Dragonfly separately. The only configuration that I could get was one without the optic. They do offer it with a, a bundled either the four and a quarter with or without the optic, and then the five inch with or without, without the optic. So this was the Hex Dragonfly that I ordered separately, um, but we'll talk about that. That is going back. All right, so let's get this box here out of the way. Let's kind of discuss <clears throat> some of the the actual gun itself so when i ordered the hex dragonfly separately i actually ordered this as this gun was on its way i went ahead and ordered a, a, a second uh 20 round magazine so you can see these are the 20 rounders they stick out of the gun a little bit <clears throat> the gun itself will come with uh the 17 round magazines uh as well as the 20 round one 20 rounder so you got one 17 and one 20 rounder comes with the gun, no matter what configuration that you get. And then I ordered a additional 20 rounder just because I like to shoot USPSA and this would, you know, we obviously would want a, a second one just, just in case. So for the actual gun itself, so <clears throat> when, I, when I went to pick this up in, in store, you know, it, it really, it feels nice. I mean, I'm not exactly an expert on 1911s, but I have quite a few of the CZ firearms, which I would say are on the higher tier of kind of fit and finish, depending on what models you get, including the Shadow 2 and SP-01 and things like that. And when I first picked up this guy, um, man, I'll tell you what, like it, it really does feel nice in the hand. It seems to, to, to point really well. Um, you know, it, it, sure, the, the grip is a little bit fat, but that aggressive texture, which I think is on the Hellcat, I don't really know. I haven't really picked up and fondled a, a Hellcat, <clears throat> uh, but I hear that that's the same texturing. It, it feels nice, and some people are kind of griping about it being like a black Cerakote instead of nitride. Look, this is phenomenal. I'm sure that some of you out there will tell me that, you know, that coating is not as durable as nitriding or whatever, but I'll tell you what, this is phenomenal. It feels really nice. It feels nice in the hand. It, it's, it's, it's just the right amount of weight. I heard some people call it heavy, but for me, it is, it really, really points nicely and is, is very nice. Now, before I go any further, 
you know, this for, for the YouTube police, this is a completely stock gun. I haven't done a darn thing to it. I mean, just got it. Um, the only thing I've done to it is shoot it. I did put the optic on it, but this comes as a standard configuration. So you're gonna have to believe me on that one. I mean, I'm not gonna waste time on the specifics of this pistol because there's a ton of videos out here that 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 talk about this between the trigger, you know, the sights, the the bull barrel. Here, I'll show you that it's we are we are indeed empty, unloaded, empty, everything. We are good to go. Um, very very nice pistol. Super super tight fit. I mean, so so first impressions, holding it, you know, racking the slide just feeling what that feels like very very nice right um in the gun store check out do the background whatever get home tear the sucker down follow some some tear down videos which you, which you have to back out the guide the uh the split guide rod a little bit <clears throat> and then basically push out the the slide stop slash slide release out of this side so you line this up kind of like a like you would a cz and then you basically push this out just like that. And uh, the slide will ride forward and come off and then you know you can take the barrel off. Uh, again, there's plenty of videos for that. <sighs> when I get it home, I tear it completely down. I wipe off all of the factory you know, oil, grease. It seemed like they had shot it from the factory, which is huge, that's great, you know, that's expected. Um, it looks like they shot it quite a bit. <clears throat> because it was it was pretty dirty in there in there but it was well oiled i mean there was when i when i was racking the slide at home just to kind of feel what that felt like there was oil kind of coming out on the slide the slide which is which is fine that to me that's that's great and i've heard that 1911s run a little better when they're you know they're they're oiled up what i did notice though and what i've, I've seen on a couple youtube videos uh in watching and prior to me getting this is that it seems like on the slide here I don't know if you can see this, <clears throat> and let me slide. The slide stop is a little challenging to get. Gonna be hard for you to see here, but if you look, right there is the disconnector, right, the, the little silver part that's sticking up right there. You can see that this, the bottom of the, where the, I guess the where the firing pin would come out, I'm not really sure what that's called, I guess maybe the chamber it, it, it gets caught on that disconnector. So there's a little bit of a hang up. You could see here, like I could, I could pretty much get it caught back here. This slide release is not, it is past the part where it would lock the slide release and it'll actually get stuck. Like I'm almost letting go right there so that you could see it's getting stuck on that disconnector down there. Not a big deal though. I hear that's somewhat common on 1911s, but I, I am noticing a stutter. Like it is, it is a pronounced stutter. In shooting this pistol, so today, shot this, took it out, cleaned it, cleaned everything, cleaned the barrel out, cleaned it completely, took it out to the firing range, shot 320 some, excuse me, 320 some rounds. Roughly 26 stoppages, 20, 25, 26 stoppages, I kind of lost count. Stoppages between shooting, right? And, and, I, and now I will say, I do tend to put a little bit of pressure with my support thumb or at least ride the slide but I, I i mean i really try to kind of keep it down further on, on the no lower the slide i would not drag my thumb because i thought maybe that would cause some hang up however i had plenty of failure to feeds where basically the round would get stuck you know halfway up the you can see it's getting caught on that disconnector and it makes it challenging to push that up and they're really it's not super pronounced there um, the round would literally get stuck just, just halfway up the feed ramp. And part of my cleaning, when I first, when I first take a gun or bring a gun home, I will clean the, the snot out of it. I get all the cosmoline, all the factory grease, oil, whatever, depending on the manufacturer, sometimes it can be like sludge pretty much. And I usually take and just barely, I'm talking barely polish that feed ramp, which I did here. I don't know if you can actually see that, but it's pretty much mirrored right so the the fact that the rounds are getting stuck uh i mean nosing straight into that feed ramp i mean you could see that looks like an incline of like i don't know i mean it's, it's very vertical 
Uh, most of the stoppages today were when the slide was coming back and attempting to return to battery. On its own stroke, uh, the round would get caught about right here and would, would nose into that feed ramp and, and cause a stoppage. Usually a light tap to the back of the slide would remedy that uh, and it would go back to home. It would go to battery basically and I'd be ready to fire a next shot. Um, however, there was a couple times where I did have to strip the mag out you know, and, and basically rack the slide out, get that round out, get a fresh one loaded in. I wasn't shooting super fast. It was pretty slow and methodical. And uh, it, it just, it was a little bit of an annoying trip. So before I took this out, I cleaned it, made sure it was all good. And I took the Hex Dragonfly that came actually a little bit before the gun did. And I went ahead and I mounted it on the slide here. I mounted on the slide, obviously it couldn't zero it or anything like that ahead of time, but I mounted it, <clears throat> got a fresh battery in there. I think it came with like a Panasonic battery. I replaced that with a Duracell battery. You know, check the contacts on it. I, I did not like that the bottom of this optic, I don't know if you can actually see this. <clears throat> the bottom of this optic, it's just, it's honestly reminiscent of an RMR where the bottom is kind of an open design, which is, which is okay if there's a ceiling plate, which there is. The Hex Dragonfly does come with a ceiling plate that kind of goes onto the bottom and will will basically seal using this 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 O-ring around. But I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'm hoping I'm pointing in the right spot. You know, we've got, I've got basically positive and negative wires just kind of hanging out here going up to the emitter. It's these these contact points are pretty darn cheap. And I got a big made in China, which whatever, that's not a huge deal. I shoot Holosun all the time, uh, which I probably should have stuck with. Um, it, the the optic, <laughs> the optic, uh, the optic not only was, it was easy to zero, I guess. Um, but as I started to shoot it more and more, the I was noticing that when you would move the pistol kind of around and you would aim kind of in a quickly, like a quick manner, the refresh rate on the emitter, the LED or the, you know, the, basically the red dot, the laser, um, was very slow. So it almost looked like a stuttering action of the red dot kind of moving across, almost like a, a dip in frame rate almost, um, if you're familiar with what I'm talking about. Really strange. The optic is like, it, it, it feels really nice. Like the, the, it's got a really nice aluminum. It seems really tough, you know, from the outside basically. It's got kind of a cool hood shape. It's got this like baseball cap lid to the top of it, right? I, I like that. I like the way it looks. It looks like it's sealed pretty well. Um, so I, I just, you know, it's got these cool anti-glare uh, strips here. So that's, that's kind of nice. Um, however, as I started to shoot it more, uh, it started going out. Um, you know, and I couldn't do anything to turn it back on. I basically would, it's got a one button design. I would press that button to try to get it to turn back on. And sometimes it would wake up and sometimes it wouldn't. Um, eventually I just kind of threw in the towel and started using the irons as backups and just kept kind of firing because I wanted to get rounds through the gun. And uh, the the optic, <laughs> the the optic, another, I guess, design flaw of kind of a, a a mixed bag between the optic and this gun is that there's a there's a small witness hole here right in the top of your barrel that's just the barrel design basically so you've got you know you've got a witness hole right here that that is that shows you when a round is chambered you should be able to see maybe the brass through that the, the back end of the brass the casing uh <laughs> when you pull that trigger you know you know oil uh, gas, powder, you know, the, the, the mix, all the above comes firing up out of that hole vertically. And it's enough that you can actually see it um, in your optic. It'll, it'll literally dust out your optic, uh, the front glass of your optic. I mean, within probably 10 or 15 shots. So I'm hoping this is focusing here. I'm using just a GoPro on my forehead right now. I, I don't, but, but you could see it is just, it's, it's just caked in the gunpowder. And I mean, I'm telling you, it's after five or six shots, maybe seven shots, it, that starts to get just dusted with that. And I don't know if that's an inherent design. Like you could see that this has a little bit of a lip, a little bit of a lip on it. And you can actually see if I wipe this. Yeah, look at that. I haven't cleaned this. So I don't know if it's just the design of this. It's kind of catching that gas 
and not, not letting it go somewhere else. I got to kind of match this up with an RMR or maybe even the SRO. I don't know. Um, but I'm telling you, if you if you want to run a red dot on this, you may want to reconsider the, the, the Dragonfly. This guy is going back to Springfield. I've already talked to him. Uh, kind of my final thoughts on this. So I was really disappointed. I, I, left, I left the range and was like, man, you know, I like a really... I was really excited when this came out, you know, like the, the 2011, like finally something in my price point where I can actually, you know, uh, afford this guy. It seems really nice. I mean, it, I mean, it really feels like a sewing machine. It's just that smooth. But I really left the range feeling like, man, like, did this is a lot of money. Like, did this really, is this really how this is going to be going forward? So I, I told myself I'm going to run more rounds through this guy i've got 320 something through it now i called springfield about this guy and i got a hold of mr michael michael over at the springfield customer service that guy is phenomenal i'm telling you someone that that really knows their stuff and really cares about what the customer is saying and was not just a lightning rod to catch bad complaints i mean this guy really knew his stuff so michael b thank you um you you've really actually turned this whole my whole mindset around on the Springfield Prodigy, I'll tell you that. Um, he wrote me up an RMA to return the Dragonfly. Completely understood, and the, and the fact that it's shutting off, I mean, I wouldn't trust this. I wouldn't trust this thing on a 20, on a, on a 22 plinking rifle or, or handgun. Wrote me up an RMA on this. Started asking questions about the Prodigy, because I told him, look, I'm, I'm still committed to the Prodigy. I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna run it some more. Um, I'm not, I'm not throwing in the towel just yet. Uh, I don't want to send this in yet. Started asking some questions. I really gave him the breakdown like I'm giving to you guys right now. And he just said, look, you know, uh, it sounds to me like this gun is not running the way that it should. You know, we should certainly not have as many stoppages that you had. And, and, and certainly the 4.25 inch barrel version is... Uh, I think I think that he said it was either a 12 or 14 pound recoil spring, whereas the five inch version is a nine pound recoil spring. So it's not that this four and a quarter is undersprung. There's just some under underlying issues. Um, I really think that it's a mixture of that disconnector dragging. I think it's a mixture of of uh, the feed ramp. Too, the incline is too steep on that guy. Uh, to feed rounds reliably and guys I was feeding uh, CCI blazer 115 you know full brass um, and a full metal jacket round nose I only shot round nose today no hollow points I mean hell I can, if I can't get round nose to feed then I won't get hollow points for sure but I I did some CCI blazer 115 and I think I did some federal 124 and maybe some s and I can't I can't remember um, one thing that 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 i noticed i, I think it's the, the the feed ramp i think it's that disconnector dragging a little bit because i did feel that the slide was was almost like you know uh, reciprocating it as it would draw back forward when it would start to encounter that resistance from that round as it was trying to chamber that round up into the feed ramps it was kind of stuttering like i could feel the slide st almost like stop and go forward stop go forward um that that on top of the magazines so i personally think and, and i'm sure there are 2011 experts out there that can kind of guide me here i am going to send all of these mags back including the one that i purchased separately with one of these two i, I don't know which one it is i'm going to send these into the, the the springfield uh uh repair people um the magazines seem like they are really the the feed lips are either extremely tight or they're they're unfinished in the way that they're it's so sharp that it is digging into the brass and, and by that i mean that as the brass is being stripped off of this magazine and into the feed ramp or as the as the gun is trying to strip the brass out there is it's encountering a ton of resistance and i don't know if you could see that but on the feed the feed lips of this magazine it looks like the finish has already started to come off and I only finished, I only filled these magazines probably, I don't know, six times, I guess it would be. Maybe five, six times. But I mean, you can see I've got, I have wear already starting, which is fine. That's fine. I mean, it's, that's going to happen. But it's almost, it's like sharp. It's so sharp, the fact that it's, and it's digging into the brass. 
So I'm, I'm actually seeing on, on the brass casings, I'm seeing these like horizontal strips, the whole length of the casing as the gun is trying to, to load the next round. So ultimately this guy's going back. Um, it's going back to Springfield. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, um, happy that there's at least a, a path to it and I don't have to th keep throwing money down to try to wear it in, I guess. I shouldn't have to. I mean, ammo's not cheap these days. You know, you know, 300 some rounds is what, 60, 60 bucks, um, 90 bucks, I guess, 90, 95 bucks, um, depending on what you spend per, per round. Um, but, but ergonomics, feel, you know, shootability, God, this is, it is so sweet. It just needs dialed in. So this is going to be kind of the first part. Uh, this guy is, uh, you know, going back for sure to Springfield and I'm going to make a couple more parts to let you know, you know, when this is going back, um, or I guess whatever communications that I get from Springfield, uh, to kind of the path of, uh, of how this thing is going to be fixed. And I'll, I'll do a couple more videos when I get it back and, uh, We'll see how it goes, but that's those are my first impressions on the gun and also the first impressions on the Dragonfly. This thing is junk. It's junk. Um, save your money. For this is a this is $250. Uh, for $250, go get yourself a I mean go get yourself a nice Holosun. I mean you really can't beat those for the money. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.